week, I asked you to send me some questions. So I'm going to answer as many as I can. And the ones I don't answer, I will put in next week's video. Question number one, how many rest days do I have a week? So this varies from week to week, but I will always have two rest days per week, sometimes one after the other, or sometimes they'll be split between the week depending on what I'm doing. Rest and recovery is just as important as the training. So make sure that you get them in, because if you're looking to progress your training or you're not seeing any progression, then have a look about what you're doing for your recovery and your rest. So rest is how many hours sleep you're getting, and the recommendation is eight, which is what I try and do. And recovery is in terms of how are you getting your body to recover? Are you doing any stretching? Are you doing any mobility? Are you doing things like taking Epsom salt baths? Question number two, how do I find the motivation to do my treatments every single day? It comes down to discipline. So every single day, you don't always feel like doing your treatments, especially because they can be lengthy and they can be super boring and there's always something better to do. But for me, what it comes down to is, I wanna stay alive. And if that is what I have to do to stay alive, then no matter what, I'll get up and I will do them. And every single day I have a routine of what order I'm gonna do them in. So I'll get up, do my DNAs, have breakfast, potter around, before then doing either my pro mixing or my Toby pod haler, because you have to have a gap in between each. And then I'll do my mannitol. And then in the evening, I will then repeat the process aside from the DNAs, because I only take that once a day. So get yourself into a routine and just be disciplined enough to go and get it done. Or set big goals that you need to live for because I can guarantee you that you will do anything to stay alive. Question number three, have I ever thought of doing more online or doing an app? Yes, that is why I'm starting my workout series on YouTube. So stay tuned for that because that'll be launching very, very soon, which means you can work out alongside me and if you do have any special requests, please leave it in the comment below. Question number four, can I do a gym routine for a CF for a beginner? Yes, I can. Stay tuned for January, it'll be uploaded then. Number five, so the question is, when did I start taking fitness more seriously with CF? I've always been into fitness. I've always enjoyed sport, so throughout school, I was in all the teams. I was very lucky to have a horse, so was riding for a very long time. And I also, which not many people know, used to ballroom dance, so I've always loved health and fitness and sport, not only for the way it makes you feel, but for your mindset and also the social side of it. But if you wanna know when I started pushing my body more seriously and taking the more athlete mentality, would be in my athletics days when I used to compete in 400s, and also after I became ill at 19, I realized that it was now or never and I had to get my health in control in order to be here for a long time and also in order to keep my CF at bay. So the short answer to that is I've always loved health and fitness. And my biggest tip for you is to find a sport that you love doing. It doesn't have to be going to the gym. It could be absolutely anything that gets your heart rate up and you're out. Number six, do I have clubbing in my hands? This is something that a lot of CF people have, which basically means the end of your fingers is slightly bigger than the rest. The answer is no, as you can see. Um, never had a problem with it, obviously, and never suffer with it. And the doctors don't even check my hands anymore. So. So no, I don't have that problem. Question number seven, is it best to work out in the mornings or evenings with a stressful job and long days? So for me, this is down to personal preference and whether you get the best out of your workouts in the morning or the evening, where you're more disciplined. So are you more disciplined to get up in the morning and go up for 6 a.m.? Or can you get yourself to do it after work? And also the other thing I'd consider is, do you normally have to stay later after work? In which case, I would suggest trying to get up in the morning so that you get the session done. For me, I work better if I get up at 6 a.m., get in, get it done, and then I've got the rest of the day to do as I please because I know also that by the time the evening comes, although most of the time I am at work, I also get a bit lazy and don't always want to go, but I also know that I work better and harder in the morning. So figure out which one's best for you. Question number eight, how do I get my teeth so white? I had them whitened a long time ago and that is it. So I went to the dentist, had them whitened by the dentist because I get super scared about my teeth falling out. No idea why, probably my only fear. Um, so went to do it that way and yeah, so they've stayed white ever since. So I have had them whitened, but probably well over a year ago. Number nine, have I ever considered having a completely plant-based diet? Interesting question. So yes, I know. 
I believe that having loads of vegetables in your diet is always really important, especially with cystic fibrosis, having dark leafy greens and lots of different greens because that is what's gonna benefit us more than anything. But it's completely plant-based, um, not fully, um, only because I do absolutely love fish. So I am actually in January going to be trying out pescatarian because I find that my body works better this way. So I'm just having a bit of an experiment with myself to see, it doesn't mean I'm gonna rule out anything else, but definitely I'm going to be upping the amount of plant-based food I have, and I will keep you posted on that. Um, I will come back to this question at the end of January. Question number 10, does my lung function drop a lot or does it drop occasionally? So for me, it is occasionally, usually is connected to stress. For me, any kind of stress always has a huge impact on my lungs, and it always has been that way since I can remember. So it, it does drop occasionally, but also I think it is very dependent on the day because I think sometimes the testing isn't always 100% accurate to how you're feeling. So unless I've got a consistent low result, I don't tend to worry too much about it. I generally get back home, get back in the gym, push my lungs a bit harder and it usually comes back up. So if you are struggling with a low lung function, make sure you keep following my YouTube because those of workouts are going to be going up, which are based around all the stuff that I do to improve my lung function and my overall health. And again, it's all about getting to learn how your body responds and how it works. That is what I've been doing. I've spent years figuring out how my body works and what makes my health optimal. Question number 11, do I have any healthy snack ideas for after a workout? Stay tuned for next week because I'm gonna be uploading loads of snack ideas and I will include ones for after a workout. Number 12, have I got any self-love tips? Yes. Do the things that make you happy. Don't worry about the opinion of others and learning to accept who you are, any imperfections, because let's face it, who would wanna be perfect because it leaves no room for growth and without growth, your life would be pretty mediocre and pretty boring. So remember, if you're helping anyone else through a tough time, always try and put yourself first because how can you help people if you don't have a full glass yourself or you don't have an overflowing glass? Because So you've gotta think about it as energy. If your energy all goes out and you give everything out, you've got nothing left to give. So you need to also surround yourself with people that are gonna give back to you, especially at times where you're giving out much more than you're used to. And in terms of focusing on yourself, the biggest thing to remember is we only have one shot at this. So as much as we have to be a loving human being and help people, that person also includes yourself. So you've also got to put yourself first in some situations because if you don't, then your life is gonna suffer and actually that is when the whole theory of if you don't do things for yourself, you're gonna look back and regret it or if you make excuses, you're gonna look back and regret it. So yes, help other people, but also have downtime for you and do things that you love doing. And also be very aware of the kind of people you're putting yourself with. They should be people that love you, support you, lift you up and clap with your success. If they don't, then please consider your company because for me, it is so important that all my friends and all my family are there for me and support me no matter what. Okay, two more questions and the other questions I haven't answered, I will put in next week's video. <clears throat> Am I on or can be? The, the answer is no, nope, never been on it, never even been offered it. And I wouldn't take it at the moment because I would rather somebody else who is more in need have it because I'm perfectly well, perfectly healthy and I am in control of my health. So I would rather have somebody take it that really does need it. And the, and the final question is, how did I become such a positive person? Luckily for me, I've always been more positive, but I actually don't think there's any point wasting time on being negative all the time. There's always a positive message in a ne more negative situation. For example, the outlook of cystic fibrosis is genuinely seen as more negative. But if you turn it on its head, it has given me such a unique outlook on life that has meant that I am always chasing a new adventure. I'm always living life slightly differently to my friends and actually I'm living life more fully. So I'm really lucky that I've been given the opportunity because of the because basically when I was 15, a doctor said to me, how, so how do you feel? You're halfway through your life. And I was like, no, I'm not. But with that in mind, I probably should start living my life the way I want and more fully, because actually nothing is guaranteed. 
Nobody's life's a guarantee. So just because apparently I've been given this sentence of the average age expectancy is 41. And most people who die of cystic fibrosis die before the age of 28. But I'm not letting a statistic be placed on my shoulders because I'm an individual. And cystic fibrosis does affect people in so many different ways, as you can see, which is why it's so hard to treat. So I, I live my life in a more positive perspective because we are so lucky to be here and have this opportunity. So we should be making the most of it and we should be living lives the way we wish to be living. You can train yourself into being more positive by simply switching any negative thoughts that come into your head, finding more positive ones and making our lives more positive by doing things we love, surrounding ourselves with people that make us feel good and lift us up. And if you can, finding a job that you really enjoy because we spend 75% of our lives working. Why not find one that we absolutely love doing because then our life is just gonna be great. There are always going to be bumps in the road, but from my experience, from every single bump, there's always been a more positive outcome than the weight of the negative. So you've just got to ride the wave and you've just got to keep going forward. And at some stage, you will be thankful for those more negative experiences because they build character and usually you find a path that is more suited for you or you set new goals that you wouldn't have thought of. For example, if I hadn't ended up in hospital at 19, seriously ill, I can guarantee you now I wouldn't be living the amazing life I've got now and I wouldn't have had all the amazing experiences that I've had. And so simply sitting in that hospital bed when I was 19 has given me the life I have today. So it's about facing each negative experience and going, you know what? It's okay. And I'm going to find something good out of this. I'm going to be including more food, more snacks for you guys to try and some baking because baking is one of my biggest passions. because. I thrive off of recreating recipes, but making them even better than the originals, but healthier. I'll also be sharing with you some more of my training and a full workout, which means you can train alongside me. So stay tuned for that. I really wanted to share one this week, but due to a technical fault, sadly the video did not record. So I will be refilming and sharing it with you this week. They'll be all based around improving your health, your lung function and strengthening your mind. Because if you can conquer your mind, you can conquer your body. The lessons that I want you to take away from this week are gonna be really simple and they're gonna be really easy for you to implement into your life. So lesson number one, I want you to try and get up to eight hours sleep a night and I want you to document how you are feeling because I can guarantee you, not only will you have more energy, but you will feel more productive and you'll feel more positive number two I want you to think about or make a list of some of the foods that you know that make you feel good and some of the foods that make you feel less good because this is the key for you to find a progression within your health within your fitness so taking a small amount of time out to spend figuring out what works best for your body is going to be powerful going forward as we go through this journey together number three so ahead of the new year that's coming I want you to think about rather than setting a new year's resolution because I find generally you don't keep to those. I want you to think about things that you can do to add into your life to make it more positive. So it could be adding in things you love, adding in a regular gym routine or doing things that you know will make you feel better or make you reach your goals faster. So it's about having the big goal up here, the big goals that scare you so much, but it's about setting smaller goals as we go along because it's the small goals that add up and then eventually those steps will get you there and that is the beauty of it we don't have to get there immediately it's about enjoying the journey and being proud of us stepping forward every single day and doing what we can to get to those goals every single day we have the chance to reinvent things and reinvent our lives invent the things that society labels so for me christmas is about being with those you love so your friends your family and celebrating life because we are so lucky to be here and we are so lucky to be alive and it's about creating memories rather than buying those gifts the gift is being together and being lucky enough to share time together especially with people that you may not be able to see as often for example both my sisters live abroad which I'm so proud of them for but it means I don't see them very often for me Christmas is about being together I'd absolutely love to hear from you about 
what you see and how you feel about Christmas. So please put it in the comment box below. Number five, so something that's become very apparent to me and something that I'm very aware of is usually we are so self-critical and I am guilty of it. I put so much pressure on myself and I'm always the first to say, oh, I can't believe I've done this and I haven't done that. So my task for you is to rather than criticize yourself, I want you to celebrate yourself. So I want you to make a list of all the things you're good at and all your good traits and qualities because I think it's so important for us to remind ourselves of these things because I don't know about you but it's very easy to remember the more negative experiences or the more negative comments that people have said rather than the things that people say that are positive and loving and the people that lift you up because I find that you can have a thousand good comments but you can have one really negative one that will stick with you and that one opinion really should not affect your day as much as it should and also if anyone's willing to pass a more negative opinion on you, it's usually a problem they have with themselves and nothing to do with you. So keep that in mind. I'd love to know what yours are, so please do put a comment in the box below. Lastly, before I go, I would also love to know if there's anything that I'm missing in these videos, I'd love to know what you'd also love to see. So please either message me on Instagram or leave a comment below. Thank you so much for watching my video this week. Please give it a like and tag or send the video to anybody you feel would benefit. And also please subscribe. It would mean the world because the more we can spread a positive message in this world, the better the world will be. Oh, and next week I'll be talking more about my medication regime and how I ensure that I can get it in every single day. So I look forward to seeing you next week. 